Hey guys, it's Christina here. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new to my space, my name is Christina. I am a naturopath, herbalist, gaps practitioner, life coach, and carnivore. And this is a space where I come and share about my own carnivore journey, about tips and tricks on carnivore, as well as some of the health information that um, people ask me questions about all the time. So today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about, um, is it the meat or is it that we've just gotten rid of all the junk food? Now, this is something for me that I get asked quite a lot or I see around in the blogosphere. So on Facebook or um, in the spaces where people are criticizing people from for going carnivore. And I think I also had this the other day. So I had somebody on my Facebook page comment about how, um, oh, why do I think that the way that I'm eating is the best way of eating? And why do I think that um, we have we have uh, receptors in our tongue for sweet flavors if we're not meant to eat sweet. And my answer back to this was multi, was multifaceted. And that is, well, here was, the, here was the other thing that came up with that conversation was that there was a very clear um, understanding for me because this person said, well, I've never had weight issues, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, there's, your, there's the first place of your misunderstanding and mis conception around this is that you've never had weight issues so you've never personally had to um, battle like the in, all of the information about out there you've never had to battle with a carb craving you've never had to battle any of those things and so you therefore have lack of understanding of what that actually is and what that means and how actually challenging that really is like I know I've shared in this space before that Christmas, I decided on Christmas, I made a really conscious decision that for me, I was gonna do Christmas where most of it was carnival. So majority of my, my diet for that day was carnival, but I wanted to have pavlova because that's like my oh, one one thing that's like, you know, we all have our own little things that like really draw us. Uh, pavlova was one of mine. And I figured that I could make it mostly carnival. I could at least make it ketovor. Uh, and that was my intention. My intention was that I was going to make it and um, I was going to use some alternative sweeteners and I was going to use eggs and I was going to use cream and then some berries. So it was going to be keto board. That was my thought on that. However, directly before that happened, our car broke down and we were in a very rural location where... Um, it wasn't easy to get around and we didn't have a lot of money because we had to use our money to, for, for our car and all of that type of stuff. So essentially it meant that um, the viability of me actually making something was slim to none. And so I went and just went, you know what, it's Christmas, it's one day, I'm just going to buy a pavlova that's already kind of made and then we'll put cream on it, we'll put berries on it and it'll be delicious and we'll all enjoy it and it'll just be one day. So that was my thought process. And I made a conscious choice that that's what I was gonna do. I didn't like just accidentally fall into it. I made a conscious choice that that's what I was gonna do. And that's how I was going to um, support myself for that day. And so um, it was a beautiful day, had loads and loads of meats. It was a fantastic feast. Like, you know, we cooked all the meats that we could possibly cook. And then we had pavlova and the kids had some other desserts. So they had some jellies and things like that that they had been making and working on. Uh, and so, it wasn't until that moment, so I think maybe, um, what did I, I must have been like five months carnivore at that point or something like something around that space. And essentially the next day I was like, oh, I actually started to, to realize just scratching the surface, like nowhere near what, what a drug addict was like coming off of heroin or, or um, cocaine or any of those types of things. But I was like, oh my God, my brain cannot stop thinking about this. Like, you know, I'm like touching <laughs> everything. I'm feeling itchy. Um, I'm, my brain is fixated on this. And because we were in a um, camp kitchen as well, so it was a shared kitchen, I could see that other people had like chocolates and Tim Tams and like, you know, all of the sweets were in this fridge. And I'm just like, oh my God, my brain was going crazy about it and it took a good 14 days for that to go away and you know I, I supported myself a little bit by using some yogurt which meant that I knew that I wasn't going to lose any weight because yogurt does have carbohydrates in it um, and depending on the brand some will have more 
and some will have less. So I think I had a neutral one that was eight grams of carbs per 100 grams. Uh, and from the keto perspective, you really wanna stay under 20 grams a day to try and get help get your body into ketosis where it's using fat as its fuel source. And so for me, um, I was using a little bit of yogurt to do that, um, just to help like bring everything down and make me be able to, to cope. It also didn't help that I was in a high amount of stress as well. Uh, and so, you know, no car, trying to work that out with seven kids, the place that we were staying, um, they needed us out on a certain date. Thankfully, they found something else for us um, and it all worked out, but it was a high stressful situation. And so that kind of made it extra hard as well as we were letting, as I was letting go of this sugar craving that I didn't even realize how significant it was in my life until that actual moment. Uh, and then I went, holy dooly, holy dooly, I fully start to understand this now. I fully start to get this and how addicted I actually am and how even just that, that one thing on that one day like has taken me out of the game for a good 14 days. And in the end, it ended up being like a full month because by the time you know, I'd gotten rid of the sugar addiction and I was like chowing down. I was eating so much food to try and help me stay full so that it would ease the, um, I can't eat the sugar because I'm actually too full for there even to be room for sugar in here. Uh, and so by the time all of that was over and to get myself back on track, it was a full month. It was totally not worth it. Totally not worth it. Um, but I think that those lessons are important for us to learn. Like, I think we have to go through some of those things so that we can understand how we work and um, what goes on for our bodies. And that's individual as well. Like, you know, not everybody's going to have the same experience as I did with that pavlova. Other people are going to have different things that are calling their names because it's like the food that you had as a kid or the special treat that, you know, you learnt was like, oh, my favorite thing. And we all have different things. And so for me, the pavlova was it, took me out of the game for a month. Uh, but in that, I really started to understand what it was like to have this sugar craving. Like I'd had clients and patients before, um, you know, tell me about how their kids at like at 3 a.m. they thought their house was being burgled because their child got out of their bed, climbed up on the top shelf, like they'd had some sugar up on the top shelf. They scaled this cupboard, grabbed the sugar thing down, was sitting in the middle of the kitchen floor eating sugar out of the sugar bowl. Uh, and, you know, that's a lot of, you know, there's a parasitic behavior there. There's candida. There's a lot of thing that goes into that along with this um, addiction to sugar that, that is there. And so when I have comments from people that are saying things like, but couldn't you just do that by removing uh, all the junk food? I've done that. I've done the remove the junk food diet. I did um, a good, I did it before I fell pregnant with my cello. I was good eight months on gaps uh, and there was nothing. Like I was strict and clean and super duper awesome on that. Uh, it wasn't actually until we lost one of our babies that um, I had my first falter with gaps. Um, and so I, I did that and, you know, I had some results. I lost about 20 kilos and I was feeling really great and I was feeling really good, but I knew and what I've learned through my own experience with that, but then also my experience with working with clients on that is that if you, if weight is one of your issues, then you have to be ready to go for two years, depending on how much weight you've got on things like soups and stews and like keep your dairy and keep your nuts really low because you're not going to be able to like keep losing weight uh, with those in while you've got all these vegetables and, and stuff in as well. And fruit, you've got to be really mindful about those things if weight loss is part of your journey with um, with that particular protocol. Like, you know, you might have some other stuff that you're trying to deal with, but if weight is one of those things, you've got to like keep those things down really low. I've done it with HCG. I've used HCG before. And um, again, nowhere near the results of what I've actually gotten on carnivore. So with HCG, um, you, for me, I do the homeopathic version. So, you know, I was using homeopathic drops and eating loads of vegetables. And, you know, a, it's about 200 grams of meat a day that you're actually eating um, portioned out and having, you know, I think two servings of fruit and 
the idea for the day is that you stay within 500 to 800 calories for the day and you can do that for up to 40 days and then you're meant to like reset and let your body um, adjust and then you can do another round of it now for me that got hard like that got really hard um, because eventually your body would stop losing weight like you would get to the point where it would be slow like you would drop quite a bit in the first round you did like the first round you did was like yes oh my god this is addictive um, but after that it became slower and longer and harder to lose weight and in between um, you know even though you weren't necessarily adding back in like garbage food uh, it became harder to you would gain weight during that time no matter what how you ate in, in um, most cases uh, well for me certainly and it wasn't that I was going and eating Tim Tams and all of the other garbage during that period of time it was like I was eating real food um, I was eating whole foods during that time but naturally just started to gain weight now again you will likely just lose weight to an extent if you take out the garbage food so if you take out all the packaged foods all of the other things and you just ate like fruits vegetables meats etc um, and it was whole foods you're likely to lose weight but that's not the case for everyone and it's missing this important step which is that our mindset is the biggest thing when it comes to weight loss or even a health journey like I'm referring to weight loss because that's the thing that most people look at when they're looking at my health journey that's the thing that most people look at is my weight loss um, but it includes all of the other things like you know reducing my blood glucose regaining health getting energy all of those types of things one of the things that people disregard is how important your mindset is and the patterns and the thought processes that you have had before you came to this and we have all had stories we've all had experiences we've all got memories around food that are not necessarily beneficial ones to us and so when it comes to that question of couldn't you just do it without like just you would still lose weight if you just ate meat and vegetables and blah 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 you don't have to just eat meat the answer is yes and no Yes, you may do that, but you also may not. And the other element is the sabotage. So just like I mentioned about Christmas, when I had that pavlova, like my brain went straight to carb addiction. And, you know, that was such an overwhelming experience that the cost of eating the carbs on that day was not worth it. And that's the same as if I just have a little bit of like, berries and I'm just gonna have a little bit of pumpkin or a little bit of this like that little bit because I'm not a moderator and I'm not good at moderation at this stage of my life doesn't mean I won't ever be there but at this stage of my life moderation is totally not me it's actually easier for me to not have any of those foods than have the battle that I would face daily with trying to moderate those foods with trying to um, go I'm just going to have this much and not over that line because as soon as just like an alcoholic as soon as you have a little bit of it you are opening the door for a whole lot more of it and that was something I'm not willing to do it's something that people who have gone before me are not willing to do because they've had that experience they've had the pavlova Christmas experience that I've had or they've had such a tremendous result with their health that they're not willing to risk it and so for some people I think yeah absolutely you're gonna be able to bring in some fruit and fruit like vegetables that's what I if I was gonna eat plants at this point in my life other than herbs it would be plant it would be fruit veg, fruit and fruit like vegetables so what I mean by that is like an avocado we think of it as a vegetable but it's a it's a fruit it's got a seed in it uh, same with pumpkins um, same with like capsicums tomatoes those types of zucchinis cucumbers those are the fruit of the actual plant uh, and if i was going to eat fruit if i was going to eat plants it would be the fruits now that's because the the toxins are lower in those particular ones simply because it serves the plant for you to actually eat them and spread their seed whereas it doesn't serve the plant for you to eat their leaves their roots or their flowers uh, and so from that perspective for me 
I'm not going to go there at this point in time. I may, I may change my mind. I always reserve the right to change my mind at any time. But at this point in time, I'm not going there because that's not going to be beneficial for me. And again, the answer to the question of couldn't you just do that if you just like got rid of like all the packaged foods and all of the seed oils and all of the things? Yeah, I could, probably could to an extent. But I wouldn't get the results as fast as I'm getting them. And I would be constantly fighting myself to fighting that sabotaging monster that is addicted to carbohydrates in that battle. And it's so much harder for me to do that than to do what I'm doing. To not have any of those things in. And there's no detriment to me by not having those things in. I'm not losing anything. I'm not losing like social circles. If I did, they weren't really friends anyway. Uh, I'm not losing anything by not having those things in. I'm actually gaining a whole lot more by not having those things in. And it helps me to be able to keep moving forward. And that is the challenge. And it's why most people will fall off the bandwagon. If they go whole foods, most people will fall off of that. They'll struggle at some point in time because they'll be like, oh, I'll just have a little bit of dot, dot, dot. And that little bit turns into, well, I had some the other day, didn't hurt, I'll have some more. And then that turns into suddenly they've got those foods back in their life and they're fallen off the bandwagon and they've told themselves that they're stupid, that they're dumb, that they're broken, that they're all of these things, that they not aren't actually because they've let a little bit of something in and the sugar addiction creeps up on you and suddenly you're eating a lot of it and suddenly you've gained weight and then it becomes harder to lose it again. And so you give up and you stop looking after your health. And it's not, it's a, it's often a slow incremental thing. Other people, it's a big thing. Like they drop the ball and then, all right, well, I've stuffed it up. I might as well go and eat all the things, the KFC, the Tim Tams, the like Coca-Cola, the, all of the stuff, right? So, a big part of the health journey is what's going on in here. And that's what I work with. Like when we're, when I'm working in my support group, we're definitely talking about the technical stuff. Like technically, what do I need to do? What do I need to change in my diet? How do I need to tweak it and adjust it to support me? But the big part of that work is actually bumping up against, you know, the social norms of like not having vegetables on my plate at a restaurant. Uh, or not ordering them. Uh, the social norms of like, you know, the expectations that you're going to eat dessert and do these things and have these things like, as well as the subconscious patterns that have been put into our brain throughout our lives. And so we've got to unpack and reprogram our brain and our thinking around food. And that takes time. Just like if you were coming off um, alcohol, it takes time and the challenge here i think with um alcohol versus being a sugar or a carb addict is that it's socially acceptable to be a sugar or a carb addict like we we are socially acceptable of that we have like a whole movement of um fat acceptance um where we're we're making it acceptable where we're you know we're encouraging people who are overweight we're supporting them by not by saying you're great just as you are, which you know their value of a per as a person absolutely is, but there there is compromises to our health when we carry extra weight, uh, and you know if you're if you're a loved one of somebody who's got extra weight, then we want the best for everyone, and I'm I'm saying weight, but you can be skinny and have health issues too, but we have made it socially acceptable versus if you were an alcoholic, right? If you were an alcoholic, we kind of are not socially acceptable of that now. Like we, we probably were a long time ago. We've changed our acceptance of that to an extent. Same as if you were a gambler, you know, you keep that stuff hidden because you don't want people to know that you're doing it because there's an element of shame and it not being acceptable and it not being okay. But food, we do, we make that very acceptable and the other space is that if you were a gambler or if you were addicted to alcohol, you could successfully avoid majority of places where that's going to be around. Um, and, you know, if you were to say to your, you know, loved ones, you went out for dinner, right? And um, 
you know, they noticed you weren't drinking wine. You're like, yes, no, I'm really being mindful about how much I'm actually consuming because I think I've got a problem with this. Uh, your family would be much more understanding. They would be, you know, be much more understanding around that versus I'm not eating the vegetables because I think I've got a problem with this. Uh, there, there's a lot more condemnation there. Like I'm not eating the sugar because I've got a problem with this. Uh, there is a lot more condemnation about that than if you were not drinking the alcohol. Uh, and so there's a lot of stuff there that we need to talk about and we need to bring up. And um, when we lean into that element or that side of it, we actually bring a whole new level of healing to to the process and to the journey. And that for me is where it's really at. It's actually, if we change our mindset and the way that we think and feel about food and we heal the emotional wounds that we've been using food to actually feel, then we end up being a much more whole person along with being a healthier person. And that's my goal. That's my intention uh, in that space is to do those things. All right, that's it for me today. I hope you have the most amazing day ever. If you want to come and join me in my group, feel free to. I'll put all the links below. Um, but otherwise, have an amazing day and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later. Bye for now.